bilateral knee replacement your best recovery. If you are considering going for two, this is the Facebook chat group for you. We have an incredibly active membership made up of many wonderful people who have already gone through a bilateral knee replacement. They have a lot to say about it. Of course, it's free to join. Search Facebook groups for bilateral knee replacement, your best recovery. You are most welcome to join the conversation and make the most of your bilateral knee replacement surgery. Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. Hi, this is PJ from The Bee's Knees Podcast. I've got two very special guests on the show today, at least for just a second. Let me introduce my daughter, Adelaide. Hi, everybody. My name is Adelaide. And my slightly older nine-year-old, Finn. Finn, can you say hi? Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, they're a little uh, uh, microphone shy, but uh, I'm glad they're here. I'm going to record a little introduction for you. We've got a great interview today with uh, a lady that does counseling, career counseling. Uh, she's a coach. She helps people sort of recalibrate their lives and get their goals in line and then go achieve those goals. Her name is Jennifer, and I'm excited to have this conversation. Jennifer and I actually met, oh, maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago at a conference. And at the conference, we struck up a conversation, and I really liked what she had to say. So we'll get into that conversation next. It's a great show. Uh, hey, Finn and Adelaide, you want to say uh, bye, everybody? Bye, everybody. <laughs> awesome. This is PJ Ewing. I am here. Welcome to the Bee's Knees. And I'm here with Jennifer. We're both here in the big bad city, New York. And in fact, you can hear the big bad city, Jennifer, in the background in lower Manhattan here. Can you hear it? <laughs> yes, a little bit. So, but you can hear from mine, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Try to do an interview in New York City without hearing who knows what going on in the background. But uh, thanks for joining me. I'm really glad you're here. This is going to be fun. Jennifer's a life coach, but her world goes beyond life coaching into career change, uh, jump-starting a career change, transitions, entrepreneurship. It's, it's really going to be a fun conversation. And while we are doing this interview right before the holidays, this is January, and it's time to think about, for those of you who are going to have a knee surgery or potentially already have had one, the new knee and new you in January of 2020, the opportunity to, to capitalize on this new mobility, new found freedom. So thanks for, thanks for being here, Jennifer. Thank you so much, PJ, for, um, for this opportunity. I'm really grateful for it. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. We just met recently, but we were at a conference and bing, bing, bing. Hey, we should, we should have a conversation. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yep. It was. It was a nice conference, too, and I really am happy that I got to meet you and all the other entrepreneurs there. Yeah, that was really fun. Let's start at the beginning. Tell us about you, your background, where you're from, that kind of stuff. Ever since I was seven years old, I wanted to become a criminal prosecutor, so that was like my life goal. goal. And when I applied for law school, I think it was like right before I started my first year of law school, I was on a trip with my mom and I remember telling her yeah the plan is I'm going to go to law school I'm going to become a criminal prosecutor then I'm going to go into a private practice and after that I'm going to start my business and I don't know what kind of business I think it's going to be a law firm um, but that's pretty much how it played out then in 2012 Sandy happened Superstorm Sandy happened I at that point was like in my first semester of the third year of law school I had great grades and everything, like decent grades. And, I, like, the goal was still to get that first law, law, uh, law job offer for post-grad, which I did, uh, I did get, and I did continue on to become a criminal prosecutor. After that, I did go into private practice, but here's the thing. When I started as a prosecutor, I, I looked around and I said to myself, I was like, oh, I can already tell I'm going to be here for 10 years like in, in the field of, of law in 10 years, and then I'm probably going to just do something completely different and transition out. I love the law, 
but what I really love is helping people. And I didn't really feel like I was helping people as much as I wanted to with law. So I started going and getting trained as a life coach with Coach Training Alliance, and I became a life coach. And then that's how I started transitioning out of law into life coaching and starting my own business of Genuine Coaching and Consulting, which has rebranded to Genuine Coaching. And that is my story. (laughs) Isn't that interesting? It's a career transition, so you're so qualified to help so many of us as making those changes, and you ended up going into coaching from uh, something that you were trained to do. So uh, there's a lot of investment in your law degree that you're probably not going to use as much as you thought, I guess, right? That is correct. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I, like, and you know, here's the thing, like, I'm okay with that. And I say that because I get asked a lot about, but well, you went to law school. Yes, I did. <laughs> and you took the bar exam. Yes, I did. And you got your license. Yes, I did. <laughs> and, and I still get asked all the time, like, so why life coaching? Like, why leave that security, that job security of law and go into life coaching? And the best that I could tell people is I really, truly believe that life is meant to be lived. And for me, my passion is what makes me come alive. And that is helping people, like genuinely helping people. That's why you got into life coaching, and it's evolved to the entrepreneur counseling and starting a business and that at side of it as well, which is really interesting. Because I think you know, life coaching has become a very big business, a big practice across the country. Everyone needs a advice and can benefit from a mentor or a partner in life in the sense of, of, of good, good advice and stewardship. Uh, but you're going beyond just those transitions uh, to, you know, business, to actually starting small business and having the right mindset and tools to start a small business. I mean, that's a that's an even bigger leap, I think, isn't it? That is. Yes, it absolutely is. And one of the things about me, too, is that when I was transitioning from one area of law to another, I did learn a lot about how to form certain businesses or companies like LLCs. I actually formed one myself. It was a boutique because back then I thought, okay, let me try and see if I want to do law by myself, like a solo lawyer. And I realized real quick, no, I do not. (laughs) Just because I knew that law was not my passion. It just, it was something that I knew. It was a skill set, but it wasn't my passion. And then I ended up starting an LLC for for a boutique, took a couple of courses on that. And at that point, I still said, okay, you know, it's still not my passion. I found life coaching. I was like, this is it. This is my passion. And started that business with the different, you know, uh, business structure and type that exists out there. So not only am I able to coach you, but I do have somewhat of experience in, in the background, you know, part of my background experience to start a business because starting a business is not just the practical or the legal aspect. It's also the mindset aspect, which is a whole different area because it's not just reading the books and, and, you know, it, it, it takes some practice and consistency with your mindset and anywhere from grateful journaling to um, positive affirmations to meditation, listening to podcasts, networking events, so that way you can meet other people who have a similar mindset as you. We live, we live in a world where anything is possible, at least here in the United States, and I think in many countries. And it's immediately accessible if you make the right decisions, spend money wisely. We have a lot of people that listen to this podcast who are post you know, another transition in their life. They are recovering knee surgery people. They're successful in getting past a big event in their life, oftentimes a knee replacement. And they may be thinking about what you're describing, Jennifer, which is getting a new lease on life and starting a small business, whatever their passion is, and seeing what they can do with it in the last, you know, uh, third of their life. You know, they're 55, 60 years old. They're going to be around for a lot longer and they want to, Make a, make a transition to something. 
And I think what you have to offer and what you're, you're describing is really right for them. Is there anything that you would, you know, counsel somebody who's 60 years old looking for that, that new opportunity that, that, that strikes you in terms of well, how they should approach it? Yes, absolutely. So, and I, I will put out a disclaimer there that as a life coach, I am not a counselor, but I do um, coach. And because I do have training in coaching, I can most certainly say that one of the biggest things that I would tell or suggest to anybody who has undergone a knee replacement or a knee surgery is self-care. I've seen so many people have gone undergone some kind of procedure, uh, specifically knee replacement and an ACL repair surgery. And one of the things that I find in common, no matter the age, is the reflection part. The reflection and also that sense of they don't know how that recovery is going to go. And what I always like to tell people is that, you know, in that moment that you're going through the recovery, there are some coping mechanisms or some mechanisms that you can utilize when you're practicing self-care, which is journaling or meditation or writing lists of things that you always wanted to do that never really did because other things just happen. Life just happens, right? Um, your career or some life responsibilities um, that just prevented you from doing it. So it really amazes me in a good way. It amazes me how, you know, when someone undergoes surgery, after the surgery, when they wake up, they are just so happy to be alive and to have undergone such a huge procedure that they want to go and immediately run or immediately just take off and take it as an opportunity to do all these things that they didn't get to do, but then it's the recovery time. So you can't just readily go running or, or do everything and anything that you didn't get a chance to do. Um, and then that kind of does become, for some people, a little frustrating or a little overwhelming or a little upsetting. Um, everyone reacts to things differently. So it really does depend on, you know, how you react to it. But that's where yeah. the journaling yeah. and, and the self-reflection and the meditation come into play. In fact, I even have a sister who, she's in her 20s, um, she tore her ACL and I remember in her early 20s, I used to encourage her all the time to, you know, I would tell her, live your life, go out, sneak out. She never broke the rule. She did not. Mm -hmm. She was not a rule breaker at all whatsoever. And when she started her recovery post-ACL repair surgery, she would lay there and just think about all the things that she wanted to do that she didn't get to do. And I remember she looked at me and she goes, you were right, Jen. You were right. I, I should have gone to those bars or I should have gone dancing or I should have gone um, hiking or traveled here or gone there. She had a leg brace and she decided when she got the leg brace that was from like her waist to her ankle, she decided to start going out and living her life. And it's supervised, it's supervised because there were people out there saying, mm -hmm. telling me, letting me know what was going on because they, they didn't want to be a liability for her. We did talk, and I, I explained to her, I was like, you know, you will have those opportunities. It's just you have to be patient, have faith, believe. Believe in yourself, believe in the process. If it doesn't work out, there's always a solution, and there's always things that you can do. Like like a Marie Forleo has this perfect um, phrase, it, everything's figureoutable. You can always figure it out. It, it's just about setting that goal, that path, and then taking the steps towards that goal. Not letting fear get in the way of those bold steps forward. We just get stopped by our own, you know, internal dialogue and, you know, you're getting past that. And that's where I think a, an advisor, uh, someone to bounce ideas off of, you know, a mentor can really play a role. And, and I think your point is well said. There is a surprising amount of time when you have a knee surgery and you're doing the physical therapy and the things that one needs to do, the occupational therapy, all the steps to get there. 
and then, you know, that's great, but you do have a different world. You're not at work if you're still working. You've got more time to focus on yourself, and that's your job. Just focus on you, and I think a lot of things can happen during that, you know, four weeks, six weeks of recovery. I, I did an interview recently with a lady who did two knees at once, and a recovery was a breeze. It was a great story. Oh, boy, I just, you know, three weeks, four weeks, I'm back to life and all good. But she said, I had a lot of time that I otherwise didn't. I read the Bible. I studied things that I wanted to study for the longest time. So her recovery was this really nice self-reflection, private, you know, positive, you know, set of four or five weeks where, you know, it, I think she might have expected it was going to be a lot of pain and agony. And it, it didn't, you know, it was a, it was a very good thing for her life. That's awesome. I love hearing stories like that and hearing how people handle their recovery in such a positive way. And, you know, it goes to what you were saying that some people do let their fear blossom. And that is where life coaches come in. That is where, you know, we help them understand where that fear is coming from. Because the thought is really what controls your actions. Um, the thought and and your emotions are connected so together that if you can control that thought or if you can change that thought, then the action and the outcome can be different. So instead of letting that fear hold you back, it's just, okay, well, what is it that you're afraid of? Let's handle that first and then clear that obstacle to clear the path to reach the goal. And a lot of people can do it, and a lot of people – see, you know, would rather, you know, have the benefit of a coach because the coaches help you get to that goal faster than if you were to do it on your own. So that, you know, that story is beautiful, though. I love that. (laughs) It's an investment, hiring a coach. And I am not here to, you know, hey, everybody call Jennifer, although I'm sure that a lot of people could benefit from working with you. But I think having a coach, whether it's you or someone else, is such a good thing because while we can wow. say things like the power of positive thinking and you know, we can read positive books and be inspired, maintaining that positive attitude, keeping the demons at bay, not letting an inner voice get in the way, not letting positive thinking wear off, that can be a real challenge. And when you've got someone with whom you're working frequently every week, whatever the, you know, the engagement is with a coach, that's another shot in the arm for you to tackle that day, tackle that project, make some forward steps on on whatever you're pursuing. Whereas without those other voices, it might be easy to let the world get the best of you. So, I mean, I've never had a life coach myself, but I've, explored that space a lot. I know a lot of people who do that, who are coaches or who benefit from coaches. And I'm, I really think that there's a lot of value there for, for a lot of people in this, in this world. Thank you. Yes, I, I agree. That is, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, PJ. (laughs) Well, that's why you're there, right? That's why you made this giant transition from lots of financial opportunity, lots of investment in, in education. And yet you saw through what you wanted to do and jumped over to risk, to be honest, right? It's much riskier to put yourself in the the category of life entrepreneur coach than to take that traditional route and be a lawyer. (laughs) So I really admire what your, your transition, what you did. That's, that's, that's really good. Tell me this. What, what would an engagement look like? Like, how do you work with your life coaching clients? What, what is uh, the, the frequency and what kind of interactions do you have and tools do you use? What, what, is, what is it all about? Thank you for all the compliments and everything. And, yes, as far as the engagement goes, so for every potential client or player, as some coaches uh, may refer to their clients, um, I always offer the first two sessions free. Because I really, truly believe in coaching and want to let the um, player see what coaching is about with the first session and then the follow-up session. After that, depending on their goals, depending on seeing whether they follow through with their follow-up session with whatever actions were discussed in the first session, I may discuss a monthly option, a three-month option, or a six-month option. Um, There are some individuals who do know what their needs are in the sense of, like, 
some may ask, well, can we just do biweekly sessions because a weekly session is just too much for me. Usually, like, when someone asks for a biweekly session, I will tend to discuss that in further detail with them, saying that, like, I don't really subscribe to biweekly sessions because the whole point of coaching is to hold someone accountable every week to make sure that you stay on track to achieve your goal, whatever the goal may be. That is how I work. I work on a weekly session for at least one month plus the two free sessions. So that is a month and a half where we work together on creating an action plan towards your goal after identifying your goal. And then if there are obstacles along the way that prevent you from tackling the smaller tasks, smaller um, actions towards that main action plan, then that's how it's addressed on a weekly basis. And Mm -hmm. I also do check-ins via email in between each session to see how you're doing with your action plan. And I do allow myself to be readily available via text message or email during the time that we work together. Which is important because if you're if you're struggling or if you feel afraid or scared or or whatever the case may be, um, you feel like you know oh I, I there's a new blockage that's preventing you from from accomplishing your your action plan, then I'm there. You, all you have to do is just text me or email me, and I can coach you through that way before the next session. That's great. That's great. And and are you finding that? you know, you can get enough done in a six month time frame, let's say, where they they're off on their own or do do they re engage? I guess it probably depends quite a bit, but what happens in those situations? Is it can it become a long term partnership? It can. It all depends on the goal. So for instance, I had one player whose goal was to set up the business and open doors by a date certain, and we finished it three weeks ahead of schedule. So at that point, you know, the goal was met. If Mm. they wanted to re-sign for another goal, more than happy to. If their goal was very definitive, which here it was, I just want to set up my business, I'm going to open up the doors, I'm here for you. If you want to resign later on in the future for the mindset portion of it, I'm here for you too. It really all depends on the goal. Other goals may be I just want to declutter. I want to declutter my home, my life, have um, a better working space. I'm there for you. But then there are others that may want more than six months, and I am here for them too. Got it. It's all really uh, specific to the person. Because I think a lot of people may not want to, start a business, that's not their intention, but they would like to do some of the more practical things, decluttering, as you mentioned, or planning for events or just relationships with family or whatever kind of other challenges they're facing. And so I guess you just have to follow your nose when it comes to um, what the needs are. Yes. Interpersonal communication skills is one of my favorite ones. That I do love. (laughs) I don't know why, but it's something about, like, you just said family. Mm. Because I do have experience, personal experience, and also um, coaching experience on that one. And it just always is fun to to work with someone who wants to to develop a better communication with their family or coworkers. I've got to believe there's a lot of tough love in those conversations. You know, where people really don't want to hear what you're saying, but they know in their heart of hearts that they should approach the situation or person differently. And, you know, that's it's tricky territory, I would have to believe. Um, it's tricky territory in the sense that my coaching style is mainly um, asking questions and listen, having active listening skills and listening to what the other person is saying in the sense of, you know, oh, okay, this is how they responded. Let me take a piece of their response and put it in the form of a question to them and see how they respond to listening to their own words. And then it creates a cycle of doing that over and over again. Not because, because as a coach, I do not um, judge, I do not have an opinion, I do not give advice, I do not give recommendations. But I do listen and I do draw the information out from within. 
hmm. the player. And sometimes it turns out that the communication skills may be a result of lack of open communication or because of um, some triggering or, or some past event. Uh, and that's why for me it's fun and I love it because you see the person transforming right before your eyes, all because of all the inner work that they're doing within themselves. And that's what's awesome, that they're really reflecting on it. And that's why, like, even for people who undergo knee surgery, that's another thing that they reflect as well. Because you see who comes to your side to help you. And then you see in your frustration how you react to people. And you then may get told, because I've been there for, for both my dad and my sister's um, knee surgery, and I've seen how the recovery process goes. It's extensive. And, again, it all depends on how the person is, and communication skills is one of the big ones. You may be in so much pain that you may get nasty with the person, and you may be not in that much pain that you're just grateful to the person. It just you know, it, it, communication is a huge thing, also in, like, knee surgery recovery. I don't know how to explain it. I've just seen it. <laughs> and I know that sounds horrible to say that I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's something where interpersonal communication skills and transform, transformation is definitely seen in coaching. Before we started this chat, um, you were talking about blogging and content. How does someone get to know what you do more is there a blog yet or is that coming and what is your website? How does, how does someone engage a little bit if they're curious? Sure. So the website is www.genuinecoaching.com. There will be blog posts. Um, I will also post events um, that I'll be doing. For instance, I, I do speak for a women's empowerment event out in Long Beach, Long Island. I also do plan on holding workshops, and I'll be doing a couple of other public speaking events. So that could definitely be accessed on the website. And can you spell that just so everyone has the, the, the spelling of the website? Yes, Genuine Coaching, J-E-N-U-I-N-E, coaching.com. J-E-N-U-I-N-E. Got it. Yeah, the, the key is that spelling because <laughs> they're not going to find it if they use a G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's a play on my name, Jennifer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to send everyone to the wrong place. That's great. And, and I think it's, it's exciting because I know that you're transitioning increasingly to you know, writing and publishing and there's a whole world for you going forward. And, you know, we get a chance to kind of observe a lot of that as it, at, the, at its inception, which is, which is really fun. Well, I'm I'm glad that we were able to put this together. Uh, I know it's a, a, a little bit, you know, surprising. We, we've only known each other for a couple of weeks, having met at a conference. But it's a delight to learn about what you're doing and to observe someone in transition herself creating something marvelous. Obviously, obviously, you can hear just hear how good you are at this and you know, where you're headed is going to be fun to observe. And, and I bet that there's value for some people listening right now to, you know, go, get a little deeper into this and find out if maybe some length of an engagement with you would be beneficial. Because again, I, I, I go right back to it and it's corny and it's trite. I don't know, but, but the, the opportunity for newness after a knee replacement in particular is there. And a lot of people will lose weight. They will become healthier. They will eat better. And all of that means that there's a, a person there looking for projects, looking for a, a new outlet for all this energy and creativity. And with uh, the right kind of coach, and you sound like the right kind of coach, Jennifer, um, oh, you. you know, <laughs> right? You can, you can tackle life issues and those traditional things. But in your case, you can tackle a lot more, particularly on the, the start a small business front. And I think that that's incredibly, that differentiates you from a lot of other, I think, life coaches, and your experience is extremely unique. Very, very interesting. So power to mm -hmm. you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, PJ. Thank you for the kind words. Jennifer, we forgot something. What did we forget? You, you, we, we were talking. We were excited. We had a great chat, but we forgot <laughs> to say what? 
that I do work with clients or players from across the country and around the world. In English, it is over the phone. My coaching services are over the phone or via FaceTime. Um, I do have Skype and WhatsApp. Like, I try to make it as easy as possible for all the players out there. So it is over the phone or video conference. Everybody got that? Awesome. Okay, because Jennifer and I were chatting away, and we realized we had forgotten that. So this is our little coda to our interview. Thank you, Jennifer, once again. Thank you. We'd like to thank a few friends of the Bees Knees podcast, including the Knee Pain Guru, natural solutions for chronic knee pain without drugs, shots, surgery, or painful physical therapy. For more info, visit thekneepainguru.com. We're also brought to you by X10 Therapy. And special thanks to Dr. Justin Trosclair at the podcast, A Doctor's Perspective Podcast. If you plan to go to China for business or pleasure, the main thing that you have to master is the dinner culture. Things like the lazy Susan, should you drink, how to use chopsticks, where am I supposed to sit, gaining and losing face. I'm Dr. Justin Trosclair, and after five years of working in China, I took all my knowledge and wrote a book about it. You can find it at a doctorsperspective.net slash China book and on Amazon. And while you're at it, take a listen to the podcast, a doctorsperspective.net, where I interview doctors of all specialties, talk about successes, marketing, struggles, and all those types of topics you don't normally hear. The Knee Store. If you're having a knee done, you just may want to share that news with the world. If so, we've got a mug, t-shirt, or awesome tote for that. Visit the Knee Store on CafePress.com. Shop for the perfect item that reflects your feelings about getting back to a full life after a successful knee replacement surgery. Visit CafePress.com forward slash the Knee Store. Great prices, fun, and unique stuff. The Bees Knees Podcast comes to you from our studio in Lower Manhattan, New York City. We're here week in and week out shedding light on all aspects of knee surgery and recovery. To reach us, send an email to thebeesneespodcast at gmail.com.